Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. Welcome. Welcome to St. Philip Neri. Uh, let's see if we can surprise me today. Is there anyone from way out of town today visiting us? No? No? Trevor City, I know. Good to have you with us. Um, anyone else? No? Okay, let's go to our special prayer and pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. My, My parish, parish is composed of people like me. I help, I help make, make it, it what it is. is. It'll, it'll be friendly if I am. It'll, it'll be holy if I am. It's pews to be filled if I help fill. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous many causes if I'm a generous giver. To worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy. If I who make it what it is am filled with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things I want my parish to be. Amen. Amen. And I'm sure that by now many of you heard that um, Sally Majak lost her daughter uh, this week, Amy Thorson. She passed away. She had a, a big mass on her on her on the side of her throat here, and um, it just just developed so quickly, and it took her so quick too. So she's only 50, 50, I think 52, so very young and leaving three children and a husband. So keep her in your prayers, Amy, and family as they mourn her, okay? God bless you. Let's uh, turn to each other and welcome each other to Mass. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Good to have you. Welcome. I stand cold. Welcome. <laughs> And as we gather for the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us begin with number 799, You Are Strong, You Are Holy, number 799. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Beloved in Christ, as we've come here to celebrate the Holy Eucharist today, Jesus asks us each to be fishers of men, asking us to be ones that bring others to him. So on this journey, we know that's our call, to always be a good example so others will follow Jesus too. For those times we fail in our mission, for those times we sin, Let's ask the Lord for his most gracious mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory. Glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to peace. Full of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your only beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the end he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. 
You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to inquire The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, the region of Zebulon and Naphtali, that what has been said through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea, behold, beyond the Jordan, sea of Galilee for the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother, Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their, left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. powerful statement. Come after me and I will make you fishers of men. There's something I often wonder about. And when I tell you, I imagine you're probably going to be a little surprised. But I don't want you to think my concern is a unique one. But my gut tells me that many members of the clergy in all Christian denominations And I think many of the faithful who sit in the pews feel maybe sometimes exactly the same way. And what I often wonder about is this, and maybe you wonder about this. Is there even one person on this earth who believes in Jesus Christ because of me? Have you ever wondered that? Don't raise your hand. Before you decide to come after me after Mass and assure me that the answer to the question is, yes, Father, absolutely, I want you to really think about that question today. Think about how hard it is really to know, to really know if someone has come to faith because of you. To answer that question, 
sure, I know you do, I do, I've preached a lot. I'm sure you preach to your kids, your families. I've been at people's bedsides. I've officiated many weddings along the way, counseled people, baptized children, many children, done all that good stuff. You've been part of so many of those during your life. Do I really know if a non-believer has come to faith in Jesus Christ because of something I did or something I said? I'm honestly not sure. Are you sure? Sometimes that bothers me. I wonder. Come after me and I will make you fishers of men. One of the most difficult aspects, I think, of walking the journey of faith is Often we're not able to see the fruits of our labors. We're not able to see what's really happening inside of others. Oh, that's not completely true. I'm only speaking about the the good fruits in our actions, the ways that we build people up and help them, give them hope. That is how we encourage people and support them on their life's journey. We know we've done that. We've done that. And the bad fruits... I know they're sometimes there as well. Those are usually sometimes evident to us more evident to us more than ever. Sometimes we remember so well how we've hurt people, alienated them or judged them or criticized them and pushed them away. Some like times we remember how we've used people for our own gain. Those sorts of fruits usually are something that nag at us and they're in plain sight. And they're illuminated for all of us to see. But the positive fruits, the good fruits, the holy fruits, well, those are often a little bit more mysterious at times, aren't they? Often, sometimes more hidden, a little bit more shrouded, I think, in the deepest recesses of a person's being. And not able always to be seen by those plainly around And that's a challenge. And that can be sometimes a source of discouragement. Somewhat wondering if we've done the right thing. Me as priest, you as parents with your children. Did I do the right thing? Did I instill the faith? Did I help them to come to know Jesus so we could follow him? Notice the order, follow him. Jesus doesn't say, go and tell everyone about me and then come back and follow me, does he? Rather, he says, come and follow me. Come. And then they'll identify themselves as fishers of men, and people will see who they really are because of their identity in Jesus. First the following, and then the fruits. Not the other way around. Jesus really knew what he was doing, didn't he? even though sometimes we may wonder. He knew what he was asking of the people that were with him. If they would follow him, be engaged with him, have a relationship with him, then they would know in accompanying him that they were part of his life. And building a friendship with Jesus, they would want to do what he did, have that same intimacy that they had with him, with others, showing the truth belief. If they could do that, if they were willing to do that, then the rest, I think, would take care of itself. In Jesus' mind, he knew the good fruits would be there if they had that relationship with Jesus first, the following. Even if it might not be obvious to them, the following was really the most important. It was trust that was important. It was truly authentic faithfulness that was important. It truly was faithfulness that directed not only them toward their families, their friends, their community, but also showed that Jesus lived in them completely, without condition, reservation, or hesitation. Come after me, and then I will make you fishermen of men. That doesn't necessarily give me complete consolation or confidence right now, but after all, not one of us is perfect. I know as well as you do that we're all sinners. We're flawed in some way. 
For every right and good thing we do sometimes, we also do the other side. We mess up two or three more times after. For every person that we build up sometimes in life, sometimes we tear someone down after. Through pettiness and jealousy and selfishness, that is through our sins. Yet what keeps me and you moving forward? What keeps us on that path? of following, not knowing that where we're going is sometimes not always being alone. Because every believer from the apostles down to this present age has to wonder about the very thing I mentioned in the beginning of this homily. And yet, somehow they were able to change the word, those apostles, weren't they? People couldn't believe who they were, and they started following in the multitudes. With God's help, of course. And so while we might not be able at times to always see the fruits of our efforts, the seeds of, that we're planting, the actions that are happening in others, see the nets that we're casting, the bait we're using, whether or not we know or understand that we're really in the fishing business at all, do we keep trying? Do we really try? Every one of us is so important to the Lord and his work. So I'd like to encourage you today, after hearing this gospel, keep casting those nets of love. Wherever you go, do not toss someone else aside. Always try to do the right thing. Is there in you the bait of mercy and kindness and compassion? Does it precede you wherever you go with others? Attracting people to the source who really has shown us how to do that? Or are you sometimes forgetting who you really are in his eyes? And instead sowing discord and heart on, and, and people truly not seeing cynicism in you, not hope, more fear than trust, or selfishness and kindness. My friends, Jesus needs us to follow him first. And it certainly is what he wants from us. And in perfect clarity, it's what we must all be about. And if we are not about that, then we pick the wrong religion. We sign the wrong contract on the dotted line. But if we're convinced ourselves that we simply must keep being faithful, following him is the key, well, that's the truth. Embracing all that Jesus holds dear must be also dear to us. And if we're willing to place our feet in his footprints and go wherever he chose to go and wherever he leads and do the right thing always, we're not going to have to ever worry, really, whether or not we've made a difference. People will see. We we'll never have to wonder if we failed because our efforts will never be in vain. Someone will notice someone will follow. Jesus is the one that makes sure our fruits will be there. He is the one in the end that all things matter in. And so today, let's never give up on our mission to follow Christ and be fishers of men and women. Amen. stand and proclaim our great faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made.
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we sincerely come before you now with these, our needs and prayer, asking that you always use us to bring others to you and to a deeper faith that the church may proclaim effectively the good news of Christ to those who live in the darkness of oppression and division. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may have the grace to rise above factions and place the common good as their top priority. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations may heed the gospel's call to reform their lives by eliminating abortion, euthanasia, and capital punishment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who teach students may find wisdom in their work and joy in the call to shape the lives of the young. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill may find in their weakness a new understanding of the redemptive power of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be led to the light of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joan Iwanski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any personal intention that you brought to this Mass today that you would like to mention to our Lord in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. And for Amy Thorson, that God will bless her in eternal life and watch over her family in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord On this Right to Life weekend, we ask that we continue as a church to always stand for life in all stages, from the moment of conception to death. We ask that we as a church always show the good example of our belief that life is precious and holy. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, our Father, bless this day and all we're about. Bless us as we go forth from here being your true workers in the world, bringing others to you. Answer our prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're seated now, our ushers come forward accepting your goodness. Thank you, people of God, for supporting St. Philip's Parish. Thank you. I 
have left on the sand there Close to you I will find other seas Lord, you knew what my boat carried Neither money nor weapons for fighting but nets for fishing my daily labor oh lord in my eyes you were gazing kindly smiling my name you were saying all I treasured I have left on the sand there Close to you I will find other seas Lord, have you need of my labor Hands for service A heart made for loving My arms for lifting the poor and broken. Oh Lord, in my eyes you were gazing, kindly smiling, my name you're saying. All I treasured, I have left on the sand there, close to you. I will find other seas. May be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope too for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as in one voice now we all acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceasingly at work so that the human race may become holy as you are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your Spirit so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we too 
become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest of love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we celebrate his resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are faithful and merciful, Lord, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those that you have called to share in this one sacrifice of Christ. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop. Help us all to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Philip Neri, with Joan Einwanski, and all of our deceased brothers and sisters, we humbly commend to your mercy and your love. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you the song of thanksgiving in Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's love and peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Henry, the body of Christ. John, the body of Christ. Peter, the body of Christ. Lucy, the body of Christ. Rosemary, the body of Christ. Distribute the body of Christ.
And we continue to pray for the grieving of the world, the suffering of the world, those whose lives have been torn all apart because of the tragedies of war and, and so many natural disasters. We pray for them. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The church looks kind of empty, doesn't it, today with all the decorations down, doesn't it? But a sincere thank you to all who helped on, on Sunday. I think we were done within an hour with everything, so... Uh, praise God for many hands because it always makes things so much easier. Uh, just want to let you know that um, we are, we, the new carpeting and tile has been ordered for the church, and so um, they're telling us that things should be in by mid-April, so uh, we'll be getting that all put down and everything will be changed around here. And also another miracle came in the mail this week, and so we received another $20,000 for um, the flooring. So and the church renovations, and so um, we are doing really well. So you don't have to worry about the bill. I think we, it's paid already. We just got to get it down and get it taken care of. So um, that's some good news, isn't that, everyone? So, so soon you're going to see a big difference, okay? Um, we'll probably have to have some chairs at some times in the church while they're working on it, but um, I don't think it's going to happen in one week. Uh, that's a big project to do. So, um, and we can all take care. We can handle that. We've all had to fix things in our houses. We know what it's like. Okay to do that. Um, if you have attended the uh, luncheons for our first Friday, uh, we will be having one on February 3rd. They're both at the bulletin stand today. Please sign up and let us know you're coming. And lastly, um, I'm leaving on my vacation on Monday uh, morning. I'm going to go see the sun again. I can't wait to see it um, and take care of Father Pat for a few weeks. And so um, don't miss me. You're going to be in good hands and uh, you probably say, oh, why can't we have that priest instead of that, this, this one? So, um, so enjoy Father Wayne when he's here with you. So um, enjoy him uh, as he shares with you many things about his ministry and, and all he does for our diocese. Have a great week, everyone. Let's bow our heads asking for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Let's go forth now glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. 
We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard humans' dignity and save humans' pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know.